heads, let's say a prayer. Right? So we meditate, Lord, we need your spirit. Help us to understand what you are saying and also what you are not saying to us today. As we meditate on your word, help us, Lord God, to understand our, your truth and to understand how you would have us live in the face of our enemies. Bless our meditation in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, I will call upon the Lord. There's going to be times when, when we, we need that. We need to carry to Him our burdens, our cares, our troubles, our hardships, our thoughts, the things that we can't figure out. Lord God, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to call on you. I'm going to ask for your guidance, for your blessing, for, for your spirit. And that's what our, psalm ser our sermon series on the Psalms is about. Um, I will call upon the Lord and I will bring to him these things that I have going on in my life. I will seek his guidance. And as we study the Psalms, we're going to be guided by the Lord God on how he would have us behave in different situations. The Psalms were the Old Testament believers' book of prayer. It was their Old Testament believers' hymnal. And in different times and in different places, they would sing these Psalms as a prayer, as a, as a praise to the Lord God. And, and those Psalms are written there for us to guide us, to bless us, so that we can call upon the Lord. And that hymn that we just got done singing and the theme of our sermon series comes from Psalm 18. This is a psalm that we're going to study today. Some of the prayers that we study, some of the psalms that we study are going to be relatively straightforward. Some are going to be really hard, and today's is really hard. And I pray that the Lord would give me a double portion of his spirit as I talk about our psalm today. I will call upon the Lord when I am confronted by my enemies. When I am confronted by my enemies. What do I do? What would God have me do? What is God going to do? What does God tell me about those who want to harm me, those who want to destroy me, those who want to destroy mine, who threaten my family, who threaten my life, who, who want to mess things up for me? Whether they're at work, or whether they're in our own family, or whether they're our neighbor, or whether it's a group of people, whatever it is, how would God have me think? How would God have me behave? What does he tell me today in Psalm 18? It's a really long psalm. It's 50 verses long. We're not going to read all 50 verses. The verses that I'm going to highlight, that I'm going to talk about, will be posted in the live feed. I will also tell you what those verses are. And I'd encourage you to take out your Bible and follow along as I read. What is God? I will call upon the Lord when I am confronted by my enemies. King David writes it, and it says in the introduction that he, he wrote it when God delivered him from those who were trying to take his life, and he mentions especially King Saul. And that's going to be our main focus, is God's deliverance, God delivering David from King Saul. So, Psalm 18. We're going to start with verses 1 to 10. This is what is written. And what I want you to pay attention to is the description of God uh, toward the end. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. There's our song that we just sang. Cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him and into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked. The foundations of the mountain shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire came out of his mouth, burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. So David, David 
turns to the Lord God because he recognizes that the only one who can truly help him in the face of these enemies that are threatening his life is the Lord God. The Lord is his fortress. Good advice for us. I think all of us know that when we are in trouble, when there is danger, that the number one place that we have to turn is to our God, but maybe just a good reminder. When I am confronted by someone who wants to do me harm, who repeatedly is trying to cut me down and destroy me, it is the Lord that I turn to. And the Lord hears. The Lord isn't just sitting up in heaven, and we're going to come back to this theme several times. The Lord isn't just sitting up in heaven looking down on the earth, distant from everything that's going on. He understands, he knows intimately the things that we face each day. And when we are confronted by, when we come face to face with those who want to do us harm, the Lord knows it. And when we come to Him in prayer and we call upon Him and say, Lord God, there are these people who are they're trying to hurt me. This person here is trying to destroy me. God hears that. And notice, did you notice what God does? He rises up in righteous indignation. It's a terrifying picture when you hear about it. The whole earth shakes. God gets so upset when people threaten His children. When, people, when, when, when His children are being uh, threatened with harm or threatened to be destroyed, God gets very upset with that. And I would hate to be on the other side of that. When God's people are threatened, He rises up in anger and righteous wrath. He talks about smoke coming out of His nostrils and fire out of His mouth. I would hate to meet that God. Sometimes... Sometimes, and we talk a lot as Christians about God being a loving, forgiving, merciful God, sitting on His throne, can't wait to bless His people, and that's true, that is our God. But we ought never forget that the God that we serve is a God of wrath. He is a God of judgment. He is a God of power and lightning and fire. And when His children are threatened, he rises up in anger. That's our God. And just as our God is not happy with those who would harm and those who would destroy, we as his children are the same way. Righteousness, rightness, correctness. We stand for that with our God. And when enemies come, we don't just sit back and say, Oh, it's okay. Destroy me. It is wrong. And we stand with our God against unrighteousness and injustice. We do. And God then rises up in his righteous wrath, righteous indignation, when his children are threatened. And you and I can know for sure that God hears us and that he will come. And that's what the next section of scripture says. Verses, we're going to skip ahead to verse 16, 16 to 24. Listen to what God does, how God rescues David. But notice why God rescues David. Psalm 18, beginning at verse 16, this is what is written. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have done, not done evil, turning from my God. All his laws are before me, and I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him, and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. So David calls out to the Lord God and says, Lord God, my life is in danger. And the Lord God heard. And what did God do? He rose up in righteous indignation, righteous anger, and he delivered David from his enemies. He did. And that's a promise that you and I need to remember. It says Psalm 50, it says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and what? I will, I shall deliver you, God says. It's a promise that he makes. Just a note, God doesn't always deliver us the way that we would expect, the way that we envision it, but he always delivers us. Calling upon the Lord when we are confronted by our enemies, 
knowing that God will deliver us because he has promised that he would do so. God rises up and he delivers David from his enemies. But notice why it is that David recognizes why it is that God delivered him. Because of his righteousness. I don't think David is saying, is bragging here about how, how great of a Christian or a believer he is. We know from scripture that David was not exactly super righteous. We know from scripture that David fell into a lot of different sins. What he's talking about here is he's setting up a contrast between himself and those who want to do him harm. He's setting up a contrast. Here I am striving to follow your will. Here I am trusting in you, Lord God, and in your promises. Here I am, I'm on your side as opposed to these people who want to do me harm, who are not on your side, and they don't care about righteousness. So the Lord God rose up because David was striving to follow God better. David trusted God as his savior, as his rock, as his fortress. And because of that, he was striving to live his life according to God's command. I think there's this important lesson for us. When we are confronted by our enemies and we call out to the Lord God for help, and we stand with God against unrighteousness, and we stand with God against things that are wrong, God... God expects that you and I, as we wait for him to come and deliver us, God expects that you and I would continue to live as his righteous children. God expects that you and I would still behave, even in the face of our enemy, as his dearly loved children, in line with his word. Sometimes we get the idea that when I am confronted with my enemies, Rightness and correctness and godliness goes out the window, but that's not what God says. God says, even in the face of my enemies, and this is hard, I know this is hard, when you come face to face with someone who wants to destroy you, who wants to undermine you, who wants to, to take your life to harm you, to behave towards them in the same loving Christian way that God would have you behave. That's hard. But, but I think the story, the lesson that we read just a moment ago about King David is the perfect example of that. Here's King David. God had said that David was going to be king after Saul's reign had come to an end. But, and, and for whatever reason, Saul hated David and wanted David dead and spent his time trying to find a way to end David. And David comes into, hides from Saul in this cave and Saul comes in to relieve himself and all of his soldiers are sitting there saying, David, now's your chance. Go up there and slay your enemy, Saul. And I, I, according, I, all of those soldiers were in favor of David going up and, and killing Saul. And I'll bet most of Israel, if David had gone up and killed Saul, most of Israel would have probably been just fine with David doing that and understood. But David lived not not according to a righteousness of his soldiers, not according to a righteousness of Israel, but according to the righteousness of God. He, a rightness in God's sight, greater than any kind of righteousness or rightness that this world has. We live our lives according to that in the face of our enemies. It might be acceptable to society, it might be acceptable to our friends, but it doesn't mean that it's acceptable to our God. And so we live our lives, even, in the, even confronting our enemies according to the righteous standard, the awesome righteous standard of God. It doesn't work. I can't sit there and say, Lord God, deliver me from my enemies. Lord God, I, I'm in trouble. Lord God, I need your help. But I'm going to go over here and I'm going to disobey you and behave in a way that is contrary to the way that you would have me live and still expect God to rescue me on the other side. That's not the way it works. Truthfully, if we ever needed proof that we are sinners in, in need of the salvation of Jesus Christ, it is the trouble that we have dealing with those who hurt us, dealing with our enemies. There is ever proof that all mankind needs forgiveness in Jesus Christ. It is the challenge that we have in dealing with those who want to harm us. What does Jesus say in the other lesson that we read? 
love love your enemies pray for those who persecute you as we call on the Lord and as we wait for him to come and deliver us that's how God would have us live a righteousness far greater than anything else in this world to love even our enemies to pray for them to live our lives according to God's righteous standard rather than the expectations of the world. Listen to the next part. God comes, call upon the Lord. We wait and we live righteous standard of God as we wait for him to deliver. God comes and delivers. Notice, notice what it says next. We're going to skip ahead to verse 30. This is what God writes. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. Makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory, and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down and make me great. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. That's God's word. I call upon the Lord. I live righteously, his righteously, righteousness until he delivers me. God comes and he delivers me. And notice what it says there. That God's way is perfect. You and I strive for righteousness. You and I strive for to treat people justly and fairly. You and I try and get this right, but it is God's way that is perfect. And then David goes on and it says that God, whose way is always perfect, he's the one who makes my way perfect. God is the one directing me. God is the one helping me. God is the one opening doors for me. God is the one making the way. You and I sit and we seek justice. We seek somehow to overcome those who would do us harm, those who would end our life, those who would destroy us. But in the end, we trust God to do that to us and for us. He's the one who makes the way. I don't get to sit here and say, Lord God, direct me. My way is righteous, but I'm going to come over here and I'm going to be unrighteous in my pursuit of righteousness. That's not the way that it works. The way that it works is God is righteous. And I trust him to guide me and direct me in the way of righteousness. And he will give me, will give me victory over those who seek to do me harm. But that takes patience. And that takes trust in the Lord God. And not trust in the ways of mankind. Our God always sees justice done. He always sees justice done. His way is perfect. And so we wait on the Lord. We wait righteously on the Lord to deliver us from our enemies. And then, then comes the last part. This is what King David writes, skipping ahead to verse 46. Wrong page. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. There's the rest of that song, right? The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies, who exalted me above my foes. From violent men you rescued me. Therefore I will praise you among the nations, O Lord. I will sing praises to your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. We praise the Lord. We glorify God because God has promised that he will deliver. God has promised that he 
is going to hear our prayer and he will come to our rescue. And whether he has rescued us already or not, we praise the Lord God for it because we know that he can. We know that he will. We know that he hears us. And he does not like it when his children are threatened. So we praise him. When I am confronted with my enemies, I call upon the Lord. I wait in righteousness for him to come. God rescues me according to his promise. God strengthens me and enables me to overcome those who threaten me. And I praise the Lord for it. When I am confronted with my enemies, I will call upon the Lord. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen.